theory is made using originalism as its base and the goal I believe is to do something a little bit more than just ordinary videos to help educate young people using new technologies to, to make that experience a bit more well not just immersive but exciting I guess you could say so that younger people could learn about agriculture something that is an important topic these days so of course as I mentioned before I would like to welcome our guest for this segment, Mr. Karamaskam. Good morning. I hope, I apologize if I got your name wrong. <laughs> no, no, you got it right. It is Karamaskam. I'm the creator of Tech for Agri. It's a social enterprise, actually, that uses media journalism and communications to support the agriculture sector. So we have services in article writing, blogging, social reporting, social media consultancy, mobile video production, among other things. Okay, so, I mean, so... To, to, to try to explain, because this seems as though a concept that we don't necessarily see every day. Mm -hmm. Is it is the end goal to try to get um, young people involved in journalism or agriculture or both? Well, it, both. So we are leading the way. We are agri-journalists. We are registered with the International Federation of Agri-Journalists based in Canada. And it's a thriving profession that you can go to school for everywhere else except mm -hmm. in the Caribbean. But we were able to, through our travels and other international experiences, be able to build this skill. And so what we're doing is we have created Tech for Agri 360, mm -hmm. which is an immersive media series that uses 360-degree video and our agri-journalism skills as a base to create unique and uh, learning visual content. Right? So the aim is to run this content along the school curriculum to provide an avenue for our youth um, it doesn't matter what education, what the education sector may be suffering at this point in time. However, we are saying we can create a stable resource. So whether the children are at school, whether they are at home, it doesn't matter where they are. We are giving them the opportunity to go outside, inside. Right. So that's the whole point of the 360 camera experience. You yes. could literally just... Well, the video could show you a 360 view of the fields right. of the surrounding. You could get a little bit more than just a, 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 a TV screen or a device screen. Yes, you could get a little bit digital more. digital video, the traditional digital video that we have now. And what we're saying is that we are gamifying some elements. We are, we are simplifying some elements of the, content, of the content in the curriculum so that teachers can utilize this tool as a way to summarize classes or lesson plans or for homework or assignments. And we, when we've taken this out to different schools and so forth, like Tunapuna Boys RC, um, we found that the teachers liked it, parents liked it as well. So our content now becomes a family thing, even though we are targeting our youth. Well, I, I, I might want to just go a little, a little bit in a different direction because agriculture in TNT, it seems as though everybody wants to be a lawyer, a doctor, something like that, do business, be a, mm -hmm. go in the corporate world. And things like trades and agriculture kind of got reduced in importance, or at least in our perception. Now that you have this initiative, is it that you are paving the way to maybe reintroduce it um, to the younger generations? Or is it that we are already seeing an increased um, improvement in the perception and you're now, because of that, able to get more traction with this project. Well, I would definitely say there's an increased, more, a better perception of agriculture now. A lot of people are coming back into it. A lot of the people who I actually went to school with, who left the sector, are coming back. Ah. So that's a positive. But we realized long ago when we started, we started Tech for Agri as a blog in 2011. And this was because we clearly saw that in Trinidad and Tobago, our agri-sector has severe issues, mm -hmm. chronic issues yes. that repeat themselves. So instead of saying we have a food security issue every year for the last 20 years, we realized 10 years ago that there's an information problem mm -hmm. and that a lot of people who are staying in the sector, there are many people in the agri-sector, we don't need to reintroduce, we need to introduce those agri-people to our other citizens and all young people because these are the people who have been pushing and leading the way with their passion to build their small businesses to wherever they have gotten at this stage. So for example at that Agri Forum I saw the majority of people I saw, I saw many people since I started 10 years ago and, and others who started afterwards and so forth, excuse me, and so forth. 
So that's the reality of things. The sector is there and thriving. It's just how it's presented, and that's why we do agri-journalism. So now, um, with you mentioned that you were in Tunupuna Boys. I want to ask this program, the technology, the series, how many schools have you reached, and, and, and to what extent are you looking to reach out to the, to the various schools? How far do you think you could get, maybe within the short term? I assume long term you're hoping to get as many schools as possible. Yes. But are there any difficulties along the way? Well, in the short term, we are targeting 25 schools who we engage with with our preliminary actions for marketing and, and testing the product, but also schools and parents who came to us during the Agri Forum. In the long run, we are partnered with the Caribbean Media Corporation and, as I mentioned, the International Federation of Agri Journalists, among other partners to say take this to other islands. Uh, for example, in Grenada, we'll be working with science-based initiatives. And so we, are, we have a long-term strategy to bring, to create a platform for 360 content, 360 and virtual reality content. That's two different types of content, but it's accessible with the same mm -hmm. headset. And we are saying we want to bring this to other islands and to create a whole new form of entertainment. Immersive is a part of today's age of technology, Web 3.0 technology which is things like drone and AI and things like that so we are seeing we are leading the way to create an immersive space for the Caribbean region and we have our partners on board in the long run for that purpose and as we see here in the challenges we've had in launching the project <laughs> of course was you know getting the support almost all of our supporters for this project were outside based outside right. of Trinidad and those who our Trinidadian spent considerable time away <laughs> from Trinidad. So, so <laughs> nothing necessarily Ministry of Education and or Agriculture? Unfortunately, no. The and you've reached out? They've, they actually, one of our partners, the Helping Children Grow Foundation, was already in contact with the Ministry of Education to, to get approvals for her agri-education program, the principal, Ms. Karen mm -hmm. Lucian. And so it just so happened that that's why she supported our project. And we already did our sample, which you will see in a moment, mm -hmm. at her farm, her school's farm. The ministry officials were there. They came there. They see the project. They know the project. And then our very own prime minister saw the project at the Agri Forum. And it was so we're just here like, okay, we're waiting. The Ministry of Agriculture knows us, and they allowed us to have a spot at the forum. And that's because we're leading the way in this technology. Well, I will refrain my comment on the politics of the matter, <laughs> right? Lest I get you caught up in the fire. I will say this, though. You know, we do have to appreciate that there are a lot of needs. Um, so now, of course, what we're really criticizing as the public is how the government prioritizes those needs. Agriculture, we think it's important. A lot of people think it's important. But now, unfortunately, we have to see exactly to what extent the government, but even the voters, mm -hmm. the public, pushes that sector as well. So I see that you have now, um, you have a, a little bit of demonstration. I, I just want to ask, is this the video? Oh, no, no, no. What I, what I wanted to show to you was what it looks like primarily with the headset. With the headset, of course. So yes. I, let me see if I get this in the right, okay. <laughs> so yeah, you'll be if, maybe trying to get it. In, yeah, there we uh, go. Well, let's come yeah. <laughs> There we go, all right. So what it is is that you can view the content without the headset. So right. I know that some people, so for example, like myself, wear glasses, and that might be a bit of a challenge. You may not want to wear the glasses. Some people are just, you know, they, they prefer not to okay. utilize the yeah. glasses. But we are saying you can, you know, use it in different ways. And here we are. Let me just put this in for you. And our product, this product is entirely recyclable. Hope you don't mind a little volume in the background because we do have some audio prompts, but we will focus on the video. more visual prompts. Right? So once I set it in there. Right. Okay, yes. So it's made to take a phone, a mobile device yes, like a phone. that's the idea. Yeah? So it reminds you like those little viewfinders. Yes. When I was here, yeah. Picture this. And right. But now we are updating. You're putting the phone in it. And this is an important aspect because we are, we are digital stewards. You have to understand technology. Digital transformation is not something we can do within a year, two years. Exactly, yeah? exactly. So it's like this technology builds on previous technology. Other technology is the same. Think about it. A Discman, a Walkman, uh, even an iPod. All of these technologies is the same kind of design. Yeah. 
yeah. portable music. Portable. So now, right? So here it's compact, portable. So what you do is, if you could stand a bit. Sure, you, just watching my cord. Oh, yeah. sure, no problem. You put it to your face. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, and then you, you once you have it to your face, you look in all directions. So look around, look oh, left, right, right. Later, gentlemen. Turn as much as you can because Ladies you can look one. in all directions. You can look up and down as well. You can look diagonally. And then, well, what we're saying is we want to have this in a, in a learning right. format, of course, where we have learning prompts to review items in class. To, so, you know, let me just, let me just because, anything. of course, our viewers <laughs> can't see what I just saw. So what basically was happening, rather than scrolling with, um, by touching the screen, as I changed my perspective, the image changed with me so I could look at the field from a 360 point of view as though I was standing as there. As though you were there. I mean, so, uh, so here's the next question. Now, of <laughs> course, you're an average journalist, so yes. that's where your focus is. Yes. Any thought of potentially now f looking for other applications of this technology? Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. At the forum, we had persons from the health sector coming to us of to course. ask for things that we can do. And then one of our long-term clients, which is um, the Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering Institute at UE, Department of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering, sorry. They are also interested as well for their teaching and their learning. Yes. You know, but I must say it, it, it does seem as you, it's been usual. I've been doing this entrepreneurship for a while. When you have something that is this impactful and solves a problem, it's difficult to get the support for it. Especially when it's so new and there isn't yeah. anything like it's solving a problem mm -hmm. in a strange way that we might not necessarily realize we have. Because already I'm thinking for engineering and, and, and for doctors, mm -hmm. you could get a viewpoint mm -hmm. in an environment where you don't necessarily want the person to be for safety reasons, whether for the patient yes. or for the actual viewer in, yes. a, in a large, dangerous in, um, um, place with a lot of engine parts or machinery or, or what have you, moving parts, industrial accidents. You don't want a newcomer who doesn't know uh, how to be safe in it, mm -hmm. but you could bring them in now. They can literally just watch wherever they want to watch. I do have to ask, with this technology, could it be done in real time? Is there any provision for that? Yes, there is. There is live 360 video. However, again, we as digital stewards, we know how technology works. The quality that you just saw was not the quality it was when we started. Right. The technology literally changes every year, every other year. And mm. it's possible it's, it exists. But given the uptake, it's not something that's pursued. So what we're doing is the unique part is using the technology, the way we are using it. There are lots of 360, 360 cameras and 360 video is something accessible. Yes. People can go and buy a camera, but to learn how to use it, to create content with it, to put a purpose behind it, to put a business especially model on teaching. it. Especially for teaching. Especially for teaching. It's that the users that are out there are simply not using it the way we are using it. It all depends on the user. Just like anything else, it's a tool. And as much as we've been talking about education for kids, I assume that this could also allow local farmers to potentially see processes, procedures, practices of foreigners, of, of farmers all over the world. Just once we have access to the video, mm -hmm. a 360 video, they could see how a farmer in Asia, North America, right. South America, and you know, maybe pick up a few things. We right. actually see, okay, this is how the plant is shaped in the yeah. ground and exactly. without just some clumsy photos or, or, or pictures. Exactly. That's the thing. It's easy to use. Anyone can use it because it's just pick up and go. And it's, it's sensible. Everyone has a mobile device. Our country, our region has extremely high mobile penetration and internet penetration. It might be the best internet all the time. Yes. yes <laughs> but it, we, are, we are there. Well, that's improving. our region. It's, it's improving and that's our region. It's structured. Well, I, I think we are almost out of time, time, but I do want to ask, of course, we're looking at the actual viewing glasses itself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's designed to take your phone. So already a lot of the electronic parts of the, of the situation is, is we well, yeah. it, you, you, already have the most you already have it. Part. Yeah. And it might look very humble with its cardboard and its plastic. Like, how expensive are these individual units? So we do 225 for a three month subscription, and then we have, I think it's 275, sorry, for a six month subscription.
And you'll be providing the, the, yes. the, the lenses themselves? We, we provide the VR headsets, but these are accessible. So we know there are people out there that probably already have VR headsets. Right, so they don't have necessarily they need... They don't necessarily, but so that's why we and can this, offer this subscription. subscription basically would be you have access to all materials for the month? So for what we month? provide, we would provide 10 to 15 of our local content. So that's content running along the educational curriculum mm -hmm. and in terms of food production and innovation. And that's what we are providing directly. And then we will also provide access to any 360 VR content. So we, there's a section where you kind of need to tell us what do you want to learn about? Right. What do you want to So find you're not out limiting about? the, the, no, the, not the just to to agriculture. No, it's not. We are right. saying we, we, we when we even started, yes, we want to be uh, you know in agriculture and we wanted to push it. But when we went to the schools, you know, teachers asked us for geography, they asked us for other yes. things. They, you know, and as, as I mentioned, we have people asking us and for other fields as well. So that's where we're saying our whole long term is to have a whole platform in partnership with the Korean Media Corporation to build this throughout the Korean region as a form of entertainment that we can all export. We can export it from here and create jobs. This, this box can actually be made here in Trinidad. We've right. talked with MIC about it, but there's limitations at MIC and we have to work with what they can do. So it's like if we get the right persons for the ecosystem to see what this project can really do, we can positively support our youth. It doesn't matter what the challenges mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. We can support our youth. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have. But I think the implications of the technology might seem very small, folks. But just imagine, while you might say, well, I want my child to go in the field, not view the field. Yes, but how many kids in Trinidad could view a field you know, in Southeast Asia or view a monument in Europe? The, the, the possibilities, once you think outside the box with this technology, are endless. But unfortunately, folks, that's where we have to cut this conversation short. Let's take a break, and when we return, we'll wrap up our AM Prime for the morning. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.